Welcome back everyone to Catherine's Plates, where it's always simple, easy, and delicious in my kitchen. Today, I'm bringing out this delicious looking rotisserie chicken. Now I picked this up at my grocery store. It's a fully cooked chicken and it comes in traditional barbecue or Italian style flavorings. Now what do you do with it? There's many different ways that you can take a rotisserie chicken and put it into recipes. So I'm going to show you three of them today. Let me know in the comments down below after you've watched all three and let me know your favorite. And then also, let me know your favorite way of using rotisserie chicken. Okay guys, grab your rotisserie chicken and let's get started. Okay guys, I'm going to show you how to make rotisserie chicken salad. I've got my fully cooked rotisserie chicken here that I picked up from my store. This is our traditional flavor. Now I'm going to take the skin off of it, I'm going to take the chicken off the bone, and then I'm just going to chop the chicken up into bite-sized pieces and then I'm going to come back to you. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead now and place my chopped chicken into a large bowl. The second ingredient that I'm going to use for my chicken salad is a red onion. You can see the prettiness of it in your salad. You can certainly use a yellow onion, a sweet onion, or a white onion. Okay, so I've got a celery stock here. I'm going to take off the top and then just the bottom. Cut this down one side and then just dice these into pieces about the size of what we diced the onion and chopped the chicken into. So we want everything about the same size. All right, so I'm bringing over some red grapes because we do love the flavor of red grapes in our chicken salad. You can use green grapes too, or if you prefer not to put grapes in, you can also dice up some apples or pears. So I'm just gonna take them, I just cleaned these grapes off, so I'm just gonna take a knife here, cut them in half, and then cut that half into threes, just so we have some nice bite-sized pieces like this here about the same size as our celery, onions, and chicken. You can always adjust it. You know, that's what's nice about this is when you're putting stuff in and you mix it, you can kind of eyeball it and see if you need anything else in there. Let's go ahead and give this a mix. See what we're looking at. Okay, now you can see how nice that looks. We're gonna finish off our chicken salad with half a cup of mayonnaise. That chicken salad is already smelling good. The rotisserie chicken just adds such a delicious flavor that's already there. So, put that in. And just remember that this is your chicken salad. So, this is my recipe. If you want to add something or take something out, you certainly can. I'm going to add like very little of some Dijon mustard here. Probably a little less than half of a teaspoon. All right, we're gonna add some salt and some pepper, and then we're gonna mix this up. Mmm, that looks so good in there. I'm ready to dive in. My recipe, rotisserie chicken salad, and I love mine on croissants. There we go, what do you think? Barbecue chicken tostadas. What I'm going to do is take the chicken. I had already pulled it off of the chicken and taken the skin off of it. This is the barbecue flavor. And I'm just going to thinly slice it one way and then chop it another way. And then I will just put it into really small pieces. So I'm looking for about three cups to make eight tostadas. Now if you don't want to use rotisserie chicken, you can certainly use cooked chicken that you have baked in the oven, broiled, boiled, or anything like that. You just want to make sure that it is cooked chicken for this. 
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and preheat our oven to 350. Now to start building our barbecue chicken tostadas, I've got a package of these Mission Tostadas shells. They are flat shells. All right, so they're gonna look like this here, nice and flat. So what I'm gonna do is line my pan that has parchment paper on them, and I'm just gonna place my tostada shells on there. Now to those, I'm going to take a can of refried beans, whatever flavor you like, and I'm going to smear about a quarter cup onto each tostada shell here. Okay, can you tell how fun this is going to be to eat? Now you want to be gentle when you do this step because you don't want to break your tostada in half. So Now I'm going to show you what you're going to do if you don't like refried beans. But first off, the ones that I have the beans on I'm going to take and I'm just going to lightly spread it around in a nice thin layer like this here. Now if you're the type of person that likes a lot of beans on there, then you go right ahead. This is going to aid in holding the chicken onto our tostada. This recipe can also be found in my cookbook, volume one, and also on my blog, www.catherinesplates.com. So you can check it out there. All right, I'm gonna finish the rest of these up and then show you what I'm gonna do with the last three that I'm not gonna put beans on. Okay, I've got those done. And now what I'm gonna do on the last three is I'm gonna sprinkle some cheese. And when that melts, it will hold as the glue for the tostada and the chicken. I'm not really a bean lover, so I've always found a way to just be able to add cheese to it. See, just like that. Now, this is my shredded rotisserie chicken. I've used a barbecue flavor. There's about two and a half to three cups right in here. To that, I'm going to add your favorite barbecue sauce, and I'm using a sweet baby rays. So I'm gonna put about three quarters cup. There we go. Do y'all sense where I'm going with this? <laughs> All right, let's mix well, very carefully. It's gonna be very tempting to go in and eat this before you put them on the shelves, let me tell you. <laughs> Fully cooked chicken and barbecue sauce, oh, I'm all for it. Okay, I got a nice mix on it. Now what we're gonna do is start placing this about two tablespoons full onto each tostada. All right, so I've got a measuring spoon that is a two tablespoon, so that will help me in getting the mixture onto each one. So I'm just going to take it, put it onto each one, and then we'll go back and smear it on there. So there's only three of us tonight. These will go quick. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna take the rest of my Monterey Jack shredded cheese and sprinkle it on all of these. Oh, that's what's gonna melt all into this. I'm going to place this in my preheated oven at 350 degrees for about six to eight minutes. Keep an eye on these. All we want to do is have that cheese melt ooey gooey all into that chicken mixture. I'll be back. While the tostadas are in the oven, I'm going to go ahead and prepare my green onions. And all I'm going to do is just slice these very thin. And that's going to be the garnish on top. All 
right so I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of green onions on the cheese while it's still nice and bubbly that way it sticks to it okay what do y'all think mm. I'm ready to plate these up For chicken spaghetti casserole, the first thing we're going to do is start cooking our pasta, so that is going to be done when we're ready to put it all together. Now you want about 16 ounces or one pound. I went into my cabinet and pulled out some linguine and fettuccine. And I'll use one package and a half of the other and that will give me the 16 ounces. Now you can use any kind of pasta for this or if you want to use spaghetti or thin spaghetti, whatever you want, it's totally fine. So while that is going, I'm going to go over and then show you my chicken that I have taken off of the rotisserie, taken the skin off and everything. Okay, so for the chicken, now I've got the two big breasts sitting here and then some dark meat that I pulled off of it. And I think that's about what I'm going to need for this dish. So I'm just going to cut it into bite-sized pieces. Again, if you don't want to use a rotisserie chicken, you can make your own rotisserie chicken or you can broil a chicken, boil a chicken, bake your chicken, whatever you want to do. You just want to make sure that the chicken you use for this dish is fully cooked. The bones are off and there's no skin. Now, I'm using a traditional flavor for the rotisserie chicken. That way it'll absorb the flavors that I want to for this dish. To start prepping my vegetables, I'm gonna be using a celery stick, a little bit of green pepper, because I've got some sweet peppers that I want to use in this dish, and then also an onion. Alright, so I'm just slicing my onions, because you know me, I like to see my vegetables when I'm eating, so I don't try to cut them too small. Now with my celery, I like to cut it into threes lengthwise, if, I can, if you can. You know, I want some texture to this dish. So we're looking at about two cups of chopped vegetables. Now with these sweet peppers, I'm going to cut them just like they are. Just kind of cut them in strips. And then dice them like that. And then I'm just going to do one side of the green pepper here. Alright, so I'm just going to salt my water. Okay, if you heard crunching, that was my dog down there. <laughs> she got a hold of a piece of pasta. Alright, I'm going to mix this around for just about 30 seconds kind of keep it all from sticking together. I'm going to cook this for as long as the package says to. And then I'm going to continue finishing up the casserole dish. All right, so what I want to do now is go ahead and saute up my vegetables. So I'm going to add a little bit of oil to a medium skillet. And I've got it on a medium high. So we'll start heating this up. Now at this point, what you want to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. All right, let's add one tablespoon of butter. Oh, don't those look pretty. All right, I'm going to go ahead now and just add a little bit of salt and pepper. That smells good. We're going to saute this down for three minutes. Alright, so what we're going to add now is one can of Rotel tomatoes. This is about 10 ounces. One can of cream of chicken. One can of cream of celery. You can also use one can of cream of mushroom if you don't want to use the celery. 
I'm using whatever I had in the cabinet. <laughs> okay, I'm going to shake in some paprika. Some garlic powder. Let's give this a mix. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Velveeta cheese. Now, you can use the cubed cheese that you can cube yourself, or you can use the shreds like I'm, what I'm going to use here. And I'm going to be using one and a half bags, and these are eight ounces each, so about 12 ounces. That way I can use the rest to pour on the top. All right, all we want to do is just kind of melt the cheese. So just keep stirring until all the cheese is incorporated, nice and melted. All right, what we're going to do now is turn off our burner. Now I am going to be draining my pasta, and then I'm going to bring it over here, and you're going to see what happens next. I've drained my pasta and the water out of the pot. I'm going to go ahead and put my pasta back into the pot. And then we're going to take our sauce here and pour that all on top. About two, two and a half cups of our chopped chicken here going in. I'm gonna go ahead now and give this a mix carefully, but very thoroughly. See all those pretty colors in there? Okay, I'm getting ready to put this into my casserole dish. Okay, does that look good? All right, so I'm gonna put about half a cup of cheese, that's that Velveeta shreds, just over the top. Okay, I'm gonna place this in my preheated oven at 350 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes. All we're looking for is that cheese to melt on the top and just to be kind of hot all the way through the dish. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, this just came out of the oven. Look at how amazing that looks. I'm going to sprinkle some fresh parsley on. Give it a nice color. Okay, so I'm going to let it sit for about five minutes to just kind of solidify, and then I'm going to cut into it and show you what it looks like. Look at that goodness. That was my rotisserie chicken pasta casserole. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs>